when you go to write a contract and you write a contract that gets formed and accepted, there could be situations where the contract has to change. This is a question I get a lot. And let me give you a generic statement that is 100% true with every contract in the world. Every contract in the world can be changed if both parties agree. That's the beauty of a real estate contract or the beauty of actually any contract. If you want to call Visa today and say, hey, I want you to change my uh, Visa card agreement to read that you're only going to charge me 1% and Visa says, okay, we'll do that, then it happens. It's when one party or the other doesn't agree that a contract can't be changed. I get questions all that time where an uh, actual practicing agent's gonna go, can we change the contract? Well, theoretically, yes, as long as the other side agrees. And there are two major ways to change the contract. The first one is called an amendment. An amendment of a contract actually changes the verbiage of an a, a current contract. What does the word amend mean? Amend means to change. This actually happens a lot. All right. You guys agree that the buyer is going to buy for a hundred thousand dollars and then he has an inspection and finds the roof is 412 years old and goes back to the seller and says, Hey, look, dude, this house isn't worth a hundred because I've got to put a new roof on it. Would you accept 90? And then I'll put a new roof on it once I own it. And the seller says, yes, I will accept 90. You as the agents will send over an amendment to change the verbiage from a $100,000 sale price to a $90,000 sale price. And both the buyer and the seller will sign it, accepting the change. And now that's the new contract. Same thing would happen in that closing that I talked about a little earlier. Your time is of the essence expires tomorrow and your lender can't get your loan ready. So you call the listing agent and go, hey, dude, my buyer can't close tomorrow. Can we change that 30 days to be 40 days, which gives us 10 more days to close? And the seller and the listing agent have a discussion. And the seller says, yes, I will give them an extension of 10 days because I don't want to go back on the market. I'd rather just help this guy out. So the uh, selling agent sends over an amendment changing the closing date from today or tomorrow to 10 more days later. Both parties accept it and voila, you have a new closing date and a new contract because you amended the text that was already there. The second way to do this is through an addendum. Addendum adds verbiage that you did not discuss in the previous contract, all right? So a good example would be, you ask as the buyer for the washer and dryer, the pool table in the basement, the microwave and all of that, you might add that to the purchase agreement because the purchase agreement does not go in depth into all of the personal property that may be staying with the sale. So the uh, selling agent, when he writes the offer, will add an addendum to the end to include all of this personal property that the buyer's asking for. 
So one amends t words you have discussed while the other adds words that are new to the contract, okay? In that purchase agreement, there may be required property disclosures. Remember, that's one of our obligations. We have to disclose defects in the property that are known. There could be other things that we have to disclose that may be required by state or federal law, like lead-based paint. <clears throat> Letter G is that option, which we have already covered, where the option is granted to buy property at some fixed time frame for some fixed price we've already discussed. Now, I will tell you that options can also be used with a rental agreement. And you hear this a lot. It's a lease option. All right. Now, wait. I know what you guys just said. Rent to own, lease to buy. Please do not ever, ever say that again, because those two words don't go together. And we are going to talk about them right now. Well, just a minute. So a tenant may have a lease and at the end of the lease or during the lease, he may have an option to buy. That is a valid suggestion, lease option. You also could use options in the commercial world where I will buy the land if I can get it rezoned. So I want the option to buy it, but I'll go through all the rezoning. All right. <clears throat> The last thing I want to talk about here is this thing called owner financing. This is not rent to own. There is no such animal as a rent to own. All right. There is a land contract and there is a whole bunch of uh, names depending on what state you're in. It could be a contract for deed. It could be a conditional sales contract. Uh, I think Indiana uses the land sales contract. All of these things are valid names. There is no such thing as a rent to own. So let's go over here and talk about this situation. Now, we have mentioned before this thing called a conveyance. And in that conveyance, we have a grantor and a grantee, a buyer and a seller in our scenario. When does the property transfer? Boop. It transfers when the deed gets delivered and accepted. So the transfer happens instantly. There is a second way between a lessor and a lessee. You might call these a landlord, i.e. the lessor, the one doing the lease, and the lessee, which is a tenant. When does the property transfer ownership then? Well, that's a trick question. It never really fully transfers. That's a lease. We're going to talk about a whole section. And if you remember back to a freehold estate, there was the second one we mentioned called the leasehold estate. Okay. So what you have are two ways here. You've got this one that happens instantly and this one that never happens. Well, there's technically a third way to do it with owner financing where the amount of transfer happens gradually over some period of time frame. Well, we cannot use these words because they are already reserved to mean instantly and in the lower one means never. So we actually have a new word in here. You have a vendor and a vendee. And the transfer of time, the transfer of ownership happens over a period of time frame on whatever you guys agree. One year, three years, could be 30 years. Now, let's see if I can do this on this little screen here. Actually, I want to try something. I want to go back to the full screen for a minute. So what happens is, let's see this. So what you have on the grantor and grantee 
and there is a conveyance and the deed gets delivered and accepted. And I told you the property goes boop. All right. The title now is owned by the buyer. Let's do that again. It happens instantly. Boop. And then in a tenant situation, it happens like this. Did you see that? Want to do it, see it again? <laughs> it never transfers. What I'm talking about now is this vendor and vendee where the ownership transfers over a period of time. So what you now have is this. And that period of time where that ownership transfers is dependent upon whatever you guys agree. One year, five years, 30 years. But while this is happening at some point, this buyer has an interest in the property to the extent of the amount of money he's put in. All right. He has an equitable interest and equitable means money. Right. So he's put some money into this. I don't know how much yet. And that seller or that vendor in this case actually still has some interest to what extent based on whatever amount of money they put in. OK, that's going to give that vendee some equitable interest in the property. Now, here's the situation. When that happens, and let's say it, this guy defaults in there, the buyer defaults in it, Phew. halfway, that interest has to be reclaimed through a foreclosure process, okay? That is different than a lease when a tenant is in breach of the lease. You just go to small claims court and the tenant gets evicted. If it's an ownership uh, financing or a land contract, the amount of interest that is owned by that vendee has to be reclaimed through a foreclosure process. And that's why I always tell my investors, you should sell as a lease and an option, but you want to buy on contract. All right. There is no such thing as leasing to own. All right. A lease conveys a leasehold where ownership conveys a freehold. Uh, the term rent to own, in my opinion, is only used by either ignorant or unscrupulous sellers that are trying to take advantage of a person that's in a bad situation that cannot go out and get true financing. All right. So either that seller is not aware which scares me, what the real laws are, or he's actually out to try and cheat you, all right? Because what they'll say is, well, you violated the land, the lease to own, so I'm going to take back all your interest by going to small claims court. No, dude, you can't do that. That is an equitable interest. you got to foreclose upon me, all right? Let's go back to the smaller picture, all right? So there cannot be a lease to own. It is virtually impossible. Go back to the whole, uh, I scored a touchdown in, in my hockey game. Lease to own. There is no such thing as rent to own. Those words don't go together. And then at the end of that time frame, whatever they agree upon, the seller or the vendor will actually then convey the actual deed because they are actually all the full contract payments are made. All right. So that is the owner financing or a land contract. And that land contract is often treated where the buyer treats it like he owns the property because of his equitable interest in it. So he may pay the real estate taxes. He may pay the HOA payments. He may pay all of it just like he owned it, but he's in the process of buying it. And the seller or the vendor is the word you use actually retains what's called legal title. I have often heard the word called naked title because he has the property, but he doesn't have the possession. The vendee has the possession to the property and therefore has equitable title to it. All right. 
All right, so that's chapter that deals with contracts. And like I said before, remember that the test may be asking you generic contract questions, or they may be asking you real estate contract questions. Just make sure you understand. Once again, I encourage you, if you have a question, to email me at raymond at realuniversity.com, and we can discuss it and talk about it and talk about anything you want. Once again, I'm going to suggest down below me, there's probably going to be some uh, online quiz questions. And in the book, there's some chapter quiz questions, and you need to do that. I'm going to put a uh, quick shout out to a, there is another book you can acquire from us that has to do with how chat GPT can actually help you study for the real estate exam. All right. It's called Acing the Real Estate Exam, uh, Your Chat GPT Journey to Success. It's going to tell you how you can use chat GPT to like ask you questions, establish a uh, study plan. It's going to give you the actual prompts in it. And you can check that out somewhere in the uh, front section and get that to help you. All right. If you have any questions, email me. Until then, I'll see you again. Bye.